Ladies and gentlemen, we are back with a microphone, courtesy <laughs> of Laura, because it's very windy out in the meseta. Hashtag improvement. Hashtag improvement, because we are in the meseta. We are going to spend a weekend out in Ribera del Duero, land of wines, uh, pueblos, the usual. Um, I'll tell you a bit more when we get sat down. We're going to have a coffee, but we are visiting a winery today. We're going to stay in a, I think it's a 16th century palace today. Just hashtag just saying and uh, see uh, quite a few Pueblos on the way. You excited? Do you like this Pueblo so far? Yes, I do. We haven't seen anything yet. But it's very beautiful. So the first Pueblo of the day is Gumiel de Itán, which I remember reading apparently, I think, was originally a Navarro Basque village. It's one of the many wine towns we're going to be seeing on this trip. What does that mean? It means a lot of the business around here is to do with bodegas and vineyards. And if you just go on the Google, you'll see a lot of famous names. Just near here is Bodegas Portia, which is, I think, designed by Norman Foster, a British, British alcoholic, what lovely. Very impressive main square. Going to try some coffee, show the beautiful streets, and then we'll go on to some more pueblos after. Good British man, I'll sit out on the terrace, innit? <laughs> this is February. It's like it's summer in the UK. So we're in Ribera del Duero. Now, Gumiel de Thanes is one of the many, many pueblos here that a lot of their local industry comes from wine. My favourite thing. Now, Ribera del Duero, which is now probably the second in command for Spanish wine regions, so behind Rioja, every bar has Rioja and Ribera, which is Ribera del Duero, which is the riverbanks, the Ribera of the Duero, the Duero River, which goes all the way through the Castilleon region, trundles off into Portugal later on. It's quite a new DO from 1982, so it's not like a venerable old, okay, the Romans were here, blah, 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 as per usual, but it's quite a new DO. Initially, it was kind of an area pushed by wineries like Vega Sicilia. They did lots of blends of like Tempranillo with French grapes and stuff, but uh, thanks to the guy Alejandro, uh, Fernandez of the Pesquera winery back in the 80s, the focus kind of zoomed in on Tempranillo, which is kind of what most of their red wines are solely made with. And they only recently allowed white wine. So the idea is we're going to be here. We're going to drink. We're going to see Pueblos. And uh, we're going to sort of dive in to the world of Ribera del Duero. Right, we're going to pop 15 minutes down the road to another little village called Calerruega. Which sounds very cute. It's an official Pueblo Bonito de España. There's a list of these officially beautiful towns. We're going to be seeing, I think, four on this trip. Wow, wow, wow. Wow, wow, wow. Um, so stay tuned for beauty. Right, we're in Caleruega. Official Bonito Pueblo, as you can see here. Dun, 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 dun. Uh, lots of people are out with their weird berets. They're not weird, look. Before Burgos. Maybe it's that Basque heritage. These are called Peñas, which are social groups which you find a lot in places like Pamplona in the Basque country. Okay, we just learned something absolutely hilarious. This is why I love Pueblos. Mm. So this is fiesta going on it seems there's people in the, the boinas as Laura said in the in the beret hats there's like tables laid out there's food people are drinking I'm like what is this go on Google can't find anything so a guy comes out of this beautiful palace behind us and Laura goes is it a fiesta today and the guy said yeah one that we've invented so in this pueblo they have Santa Aguila which is a patron saint and it's as a fiesta which is for the ladies only traditionally so the boys, being <laughs> bloody boys, were like, well, screw you guys. <laughs> we're going to choose a day and do Sant San Aguedo <laughs> instead of Santa Agueda. And so for the last, he said, seven or eight years, they've just invented their own fiesta. He was like, but don't check the list of saints because San Aguedo is not on it. <laughs> this hill is full of the traditional bodegas, which is very common in Ribera del Duero area. Lots of underground wineries the sake of the preservation of the wine. So this hill has loads of little, looks like hobbit houses, which are ventilated underground uh, places to store. For example, a couple over there. And if you look on the hill, 
bang, over there as well. <laughs> I am absolutely fascinated by this town. I feel like I'm in the Basque country. There are men drinking chacolí. People playing this game called Rana, where they're tossing a stone into like holes with a frog, which apparently is very Basque. They're wearing their boinas. Yet we are 100 kilometers south of Burgos. I don't get it, but I love it. Taking my wine. <laughs> <laughs> We're in Aranda de Duero because this is the Duero, which is the river. And this is one of the main wine cities. And then uh, we'll head on to our hotel. Time to get a little snack. some little sandwiches before we carry on because otherwise we're going to be off our faces with 14% alcohol rosé wine. Around the Red World has seven kilometers of underground tunnels, Laura, which you probably won't see because they're still bodegas, but there's lots here. So if in doubt, photo and photo. Um, and the Virgen of the town is the Virgen de la Viña, the Virgin of the Vine. Um, which is kind of cool, they've got their own little virgin. Um, but we're just having a little cheeky one. And now we're gonna head to the Posada, which is the old coaching inn, the old hotel of Bodegas Prado Rey, which is where we'll be for the next few hours. So we'll see you there. Where's the front door? I'm going to check in very quickly and then run back down the road where we came to the winery. What do you think of the room? Prado Rey is a wonderful Ribera del Duero winery. Uh, I sell a few of their wines in the shop. So at the moment it's the classic uh, visit of the bottling room, the this room, that room. In the barrel room, what's really cool is they have a system here of how they make one of their top, or their top wine called Retablo. They've only done it now four times, and they use a sherry-like Solera system. So they blend from year to year to have a non-vintage Solera wine. Mm -hmm. for a free complimentary drink and a tour, maybe, of the hotel. I think so. So we just saw the inside of a lovely old church and a retablo. And the retablo is like a frieze. And their top wine is called... Retablo. Retablo, yes. So we're going to go back in and have some food. It's going to be great. And everyone's looking at us like dickheads. All right, because we are. Because we are. <laughs> 
Mr. Mano. Nice. <laughs> so we got a bottle of the Prado Ray White, which is really, really yummy. And we've ordered some croquetas uh, made with oxtail, I think, and a tomato marmalade, which sounds really interesting. And then we both got a lechafe with lamb, no? Both have lamb burgers. Juicy. <laughs> but enough about me. <laughs> so we finished our meal and <clears throat> Laura quite rightly wanted a little sweet wine. So we came to this bar. Show them the bar, Laura. Beautiful bar. And we were like, do you have any sweet wines? He's like, <laughs> no, we don't have any sweet wines. So he brings a bottle out from the, from the floor. He goes, we really have this, this is the only sweet thing we have. I'm like, reading the language. It's like a bottle that looks like it's from a 19th century pirate. But it is a vino de licor, which is like, like a port wine. It's a sweet wine from Moscatel, from Valencia. It's Denominación de Origen Valencia. I was like, oh, I have two of those. He's like, okay, I don't have any here, so I'm going to get another bottle. Brings us this little bottle. This is the new bottle, he says. Gives us a, a slug of each. I'm like, okay. This is a 34% alcohol schnapps. Join us here at the 15th annual Shithead Finals with the Laura Villanueva team playing for the win for Spain. Good morning. It's a Sunday morning, a fresh blue Sunday morning. And like they did in the 17th century, we are doing a little paseo through the grounds of the palace. <laughs> we're going to have breakfast and then we're going to go through various villages and do a little route through a canyon and uh, maybe drink no more wine. No. Hola. Hola. Si. <laughs> so we've come out to the little hamlet of La Vid, which means the vine, to a whopping great uh, monastery called Santa Maria de la Vid, Saint Mary of the Vine. Now I've got to, I've written this down. This is what we call research. So it is 12th century, but there's lots of monasteries in Spain, lots of monasteries related to wine, because monks are drunk all the time. Benedictines, this is now Augustine, but it was set up, I had to write this down, by the white canons in English, the Premonstratensians. <laughs> Never heard I of that order, that. never heard of that order. There's a wine spa over here. Uh, there is places to stay, but this is absolutely massive and just sat out here in the middle of Ribera del Duero. This area is absolutely peppered with castles. Anytime in the Meseta, I mean, this is called Castilla y Leon for a reason. Oh, anytime there's an, uh, I didn't know that. <laughs> anytime there's any elevation, you chuck a castle on it. Medieval turret in the middle of nowhere. What do you think? Cool. <laughs> cool, 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 cool. So we have entered, as you can see, the canyon of Wolf River, in Canyon del Rio Lobos, and this is a karstic limestone landscape, really pretty. And there is caves, there are formations, and more importantly, hiding in the middle of this random canyon, 
a medieval chapel. What? So we'll see what it looks like. So we're walking down <laughs> the Senda del Rio, the river path, although the river's kind of over there. So the river's kind of buggered off that way. But anyway, it's very, very beautiful. Uh, lots of trees. Um, you can see the limestone, Mesozoic era limestone cliffs that are still, haven't been eroded away. And there's loads of like eagles, no, not eagles, no. vultures. So we're gonna make our way down to the 12th century little, I think it's a Romanesque style chapel. Off to the caves we go. Walking into the Cueva de San Bartolome, Bartolome, which is the name of the church. This is a big ass cave. Jesus wept. Stop the eye of the devil, a eroded out oval shaped opening in the middle of a limestone wall. de Osma, which is another Pueblo Bonito of Spain. And do you know when it became a Pueblo Bonito of Spain? Last year. Last year. Oh, really? It's one of the newest ones. Ah. So there you go. So uh, we'll see you there for some lunch. Mm. Right, we're going to have a little bit of lunch. There's a cool bar called Alcamilla de Arevaca, which hopefully there'll be space in. Um, have a little then we're going to have a look around this official beautiful town. It's very cute. Well, we've got a coca, which is like a Mallorcan Alicante style pizza with butifarra, which is a Catalan sausage on top. Not traditional Castilian. We've got some croquetas. I can't remember. Um, we'll talk about the flavors when we get We've got torreznos. We're in the province of Soria. This is like crispy fried pork belly, which is amazing. We've got some cannellonis, and that's it, right? And I've got a craft beer made by them. I want to do a bit of, try and do ASMR with the crispy skin. Cannelloni of wild mushrooms. Mm. Let's see which one is. But you, you think that's the cod with orange? Yeah. Cod and orange? Is that the pairing with? Mild, the flavor of the not, not too fishy. Not too fishy, but very orangey. Forget the number two. I should also just say just how creamy these are. That's the blue cheese. Mmm. Truffled cognac with the fatty pork belly. That's got to be the best. Mm. There's a lot going on. That's for my finger licking fans. Then on our left is the massive medieval wall of the town. Um, it's really clean, really pretty. So Ayon is another Pueblo Bonito, another beautiful town, uh, hiding in a fold of the Meseta. We can see the mountains of Madrid on the horizon. Um, we are starting to run out of light a little bit. 
and time in the day. So we need to see this quickly. Stop of the day, Maderuelo. So this town is perched over water. There, there's a, an embalse here, which was created during the Franco era, the Linares Reservoir. And it's now got a nice waterside location. We're gonna have a look at it. Um, it's another Pueblo Bonito of Spain. This will be our last stop of the day, Maderuelo. Question is Laura. Maderuelo with its beautiful old streets high above the water. Ayon with its hidden away medieval beauty. <laughs> or grandiose Burgo de Osma. I, I honestly don't know. I think the three of them are beautiful. This is really fascinating, this it. one though. Um, how you, this is the thing, you can't get to these places without a car. Mm. So thank you again for being the chauffeur. And this place particularly is like stuck up on a ridge. It's a thin type of village, like two streets, three streets wide. It's amazing. Well, that is the last bit of a lovely and very quiet and calm weekend mostly in the province of Soria in the Ribera del Duero region. To be honest, I thought I was going to talk more about wine this trip, but then it was just like, look at all the towns, look at all the towns. But anyway, uh, Lara, what should they like do? They should like and they should subscribe and they should ask and th that's it. <laughs> yeah, ask, just uh, whatever, whatever video you want, I'll do it. Um, so yeah, from us in the depths of the Ribera del Duero wine area. See you next time. Ciao.